Hello, uh, thank you for joining me for a video tutorial on what a SBAC performance task may look like. So we'll be going through what the formatting is and kind of the, the thought process of how you might try to approach these performance tasks. So for our example, we're going to use that SBAC online practice test. You can find that link on, on, a, on the additional support slide. Um, in the uh, slides deck that you'll be getting for um, practice for like uh, preparing for the uh, CASP exam. So you can go ahead and click on the link in that additional support slide. It may look a little different later, but that, that link will be there. You'll see this familiar link if you watched the last video about taking the SBAC math test. Um, this one's right next to it, the performance task. So I'm not going to go through each option. But basically, you get to that site, you just hit sign in, you sign in as a guest, just a generic user here, pick your grade, 11. You got these uh, Smarter Balance practice tests here. Um, in the last video, we did the high school math practice test. We're going to pop right up over here to the performance task, the high school math performance task. You just click on that, and uh, if you, you, you'll see the exact same. Um, usability settings that were on the previous test and you can I go through those in the previous video so I'm not gonna go through those again we're just gonna take the default settings and hit select do our audio playback all right the audio works again this is just saying yep I checked my settings I know there's a help guide click begin test now so this per a performance task will look a little different it's basically going to be one large story problem, kind of like a narrative walking you through different parts of one situation. So the, the difference in how that looks is, um, and what that means is on the left side, this is still kind of looks familiar. They set up a story problem. Um, but like on the previous test, each time you do a story problem, this is different. But on the performance task, this left column will stay the same, basically the, through the whole thing. So I, I would expect that that stays the same You'll notice up on the right here, it has a one through six. These are the different parts of the same question. So um, if I just clicked to like part three, notice the left-hand side of the page, the, the actual setup of the story stays the same. So this is all your the information that you need for the problem. You can answer any of these. Uh, you should go in order because it really scaffolds you. They, they, set, they set you up to work on this in order. So if you're thinking of a strategy to go through this, think try each step, but, but you don't necessarily have to know the answer in step two in order to do problems part six. So if don't get discouraged if, if for some reason on this first one, say you don't even know the first one, um, you can still try each section and have it and have a opportunity to get that correct. Typically, the first one or two questions are nice, like easy entry ones. So if you're going to kind of strategize on which ones to go after, these first couple will be the easier ones and they get uh, slightly more difficult as you go. Some At some point, if you kind of figure out maybe the trick to the problem or like the equation they're looking for or formula, then the latter parts actually may be pretty easy. So let's just look at this one. So this gives you a scenario of a candle A and a candle B. We can read through this. It says uh, there's two friends. They light a candle. They light each of these candles initially here and take a picture after one hour. So notice candle A burned a little lower. Candle B burned a little lower. They give you the initial height of candle A and candle B. And then they give you the height after the one hour. So I would be thinking in my head, all right, what's, how do I, uh, take kind of dismantle problems so I could figure them out. What I would do is have a notepad and a, a paper and pencil handy, and I would redraw these pictures on it and kind of mark out areas. I would mark, all right, 20 centimeters, 10 centimeters, and I would label things on here. Then I would label them here so you can get visuals of it. This So this first question here, it asks you just to kind of analyze it. What would happen after three hours of burning for candle A and candle B? So let's just do one at a time. And I'm not necessarily going to go through the, the correct answers and working these out. I'm just helping you 
think through how to set them up. I would be trying to use every advantage available. So you have your paper pencil where you can draw visuals. Um, so that that actually, has, let's just keep it simple right there. I would I would start with that. I'd be thinking, okay, I know after one hour it gets down to 16. I wonder what maybe the difference between the starting at 20 and the 16 is. So with the, the calculator, oh, I, I need to know. Okay, so 20 minus 16, oh man, how do I do that? Oh, well, I need a calculator. Well, the good thing is they provide you with that. And it's not just any calculator. If you click it, you might notice this format's familiar to Desmos because it is the Desmos graphing calculator mixed with a regular calculator. So when you hit calculator, it pops up with the Desmos graphing calculator in tiny format. You just want to do some addition subtraction. You can hit show keypad. Um, as I was saying, you could just hit show keypad and it brings up basically a scientific calculator here. And I just wanted to know 20 minus 16. Notice right here, it gives you little answers. So you can use one of these slots that you might be thinking, I got to write a whole equation in here to graph it here. Not necessarily. It looks a little weird, but it's really handy. Uh, you can just use this individual blank as an equation. So you can type in anything you would in a calculator, and it'll kind of autofill the answer here. So these quick little things, now I would just jot down, okay, four. It burns four centimeters each hour on my paper. Okay, well, after three hours, clear this out. Uh, it'd be four times three hours, 12. Okay, I know it burns down 12 after uh, three hours. So that's taking away from the 20. So I, mean, I jotted down my little note there. Now I'm like, okay, 20 minus 12. Okay, it looks like that first one may burn down to um, eight centimeters after three hours. Great. So then that'd be where you could X out of the calculator, type in an answer there. Okay, so the, the this pad here is not for using your calculator. It's for typing the answer in. I just type it here. All right, let's move to the second section here. It builds off the first one. So now you're thinking, um, it's saying, it gets, it's setting up a scenario. The candles of each type were lit at the same time. And Abby thinks something. She thinks that candle A will burn more quickly than candle B and get down to zero centimeters first. Julie thinks that candle B will burn quicker because it's shorter. Okay, so this is so now she says which candle will burn out first? Give a mathematical explanation to convince Abby and Julie of your solution. Clearly identify the quantities involved. This is where I would also kind of jot ideas down on your paper and then summarize those ideas here. For example, it doesn't have to be a, a poetic novel. Just think, you know, you, you have whatever thought process you, you're having about it, just try to write that as clearly as possible in complete sentences. And that will get you some points here on this, okay? So you might be thinking um, both, if both uh, handles start at the same height, We would need to subtract four centimeters per hour until each candle reaches zero centimeters. That'd be a good start, and you could kind of later talk about. Um, whichever one reaches first to zero first, um, you would know um, that that would that would burn out the quickest. It could be as simple as that. That would get you some points. So I'm not going to stay on here talking about the ex an exact answer. Just wanted to give you an idea that you need to write some complete sentences, put some numbers in there to clearly identify quantities. That's a mathematical explanation. 
So don't use vague, vague sentences without any numbers in it. That, that would get you less points. So the next section, it kind of set up a new scenario and asks you again to explain how you determined your answer. So again, you would try to, as best you can in a mathematical way, express your ideas about if you started with fresh candles and burned them for three hours. Um, so some of the things you could do is maybe use, you can refer to your graphing calculator um, as part of your explanation. And uh, maybe you can say, if you graph them, then you will notice that it starts at 20, and then after an hour, it goes, candle A goes to 16, and candle B, then down to 12, then down to 8. And if you look at the same graph, perhaps the candle B goes down, but it never, they never cross the same height until after three hours. You know, something like that. So let's take a look at part four. So now it's talking about decided to help. Um, so you're, you're trying to use some functions. So if you see something like this, you might be thinking that the line formula, right? Y equals MX plus B, that kind of idea. Notice it's written a little different, but, but real close. Like this kind of should look familiar, right? You see a, some, like maybe this could be the MX part um here's maybe the b part this might be like the y part it's okay when you have a plus things added together they can be in any order it could be the nt first and the k next this is where again i would use your piece of paper maybe swap these two so maybe you have h equals nt plus k that's the same equation now it might visually look easier to you to understand that they're trying to talk about how h is a function of time hmm that's oh sorry h is the height that's like y right the height on your graph and t is the function of time that's like x so you can in your piece of paper maybe in a different color ink write it y equals mx plus b so you, so you can see it okay so just ways to keep track um, and write it in the way that makes sense to you and just make sure you note like how the test is trying to format it because then it asks you to say well what does k and n represent well k would be the initial height in this case as same as your um your your b term and n is like the x term where it's uh the slope right so that's the kind of explanation they're looking for so now we're getting to the last two here so it's getting more expecting you to have some kind of a formula some kind of maybe an equation to get to these parts. So using those same K and N values, can you write the equation? At this point, it probably would help if you could have could think this equation through and um, write it earlier. It's going to help you a lot on this part. And this is where I would pull up this calculator and be thinking um, that Y equals MX plus B, the slope. Let's do this first. I'm just going to write it out. It's going down, so minus, and it's going down 4 centimeters per hour, 4x, and then the plus, where does it start? It started at 20. So this was candle A. And you can zoom out or use this whole page here. I just kind of blew up. You can expand that out. If I zoom out, there's my equation of the line here. Um, so you can type in some ideas and get instant feedback. That's why I'm telling you this. Um, so you could try it to add another one, hit the plus sign, um, just another expression, and try the second equation. Maybe minus 1x, and that one started at, I think it was like 9 or something. Um, so now if you could figure that part out and see maybe they intersect, and that might tell you some information or you can see where they start, or maybe you just see it and it's completely weird looking, then you might know your equation's wrong, right? So having this, this Desmos calculator is really handy. So now I'm gonna zoom back out of that. 
X out of my calculator. So this is looking for an equation where, again, if you notice in the first video, um, you're going to want to utilize these features. You're going to be, um, they have uh, the height H in here and the T hour. So this will be substituting H will be your Y, T is going to be your X location. This is where your piece of paper will be very handy. Write out the equation on your paper first and then type it in here. Okay. And this finally, the last question is always kind of like the challenge one. Um, so if you get to here and you're still cranking away on this test, good for you. Um, don't sweat it so much on this, but try your best. Uh, this will be a ch where you're going to take whatever formula you've created in the first five parts, and you're going to be uh, thinking outside the box and tweaking it. So in this case, can you come up with two other equations that use that burn down to zero after eight hours? So how you would think this through, use your tools, use your calculator, your paper, Play around with the numbers on this final one. It's going to be a kind of like a, a trickier one, just something a little outside the box. Okay. All right. I hope this video helped uh, think how you think through the problems. Once you're done with this and you got some kind of an answer in here, you hit next and it prompts you with, uh, oh, I didn't put answers in for three, four, and five. Okay. So I've got to go in to have three, have something here, four have something here. I've got to have something there. And then now it says you've reached the end of the test. Hit end test when you're ready to end it. That's up here at the top left. Hit yes. So I'm ready to end. Now you have a last chance to review any of these sections. If you're good with them, you hit submit test. And yes, and now the test is done. So don't close it before you hit submit and yes on that. Thanks for joining me today and good luck on the test.